paperwork in process in 1987. We actually founded the orchestra legally in 1989, and we played our first uh, rehearsal camp and tour in 1990. Uh, the reason for creating the orchestra came out of my work in Taiwan, Japan, and mainland China, where um, I heard so many wonderful young musicians, so many of whom said they wanted to go abroad to study. Well, there's nothing wrong with going abroad to study, no matter where, where that, from, from where to where. But the fact is that Asians often go abroad and don't return to their home country. And well, what's the point of building up a, try, trying to build a music program or a great symphony orchestra in Asia if the best players are going to go abroad and not return? So the idea came, probably inspired by the European Community Youth Orchestra, that uh, perhaps we should have an Asian community youth orchestra. Of course, there is not a community of nations here. So the name was shortened to Asian Youth Orchestra. And we uh, played with Yehudi Menuhin, uh, coming on board as our music director. We played our first concerts under Yehudi's direction in 1990. told that in some musical circles, people look down on youth orchestras here. Yeah. That's a great shame, because youth orchestras have a very special spirit all their own, and they can give something to music that really touches an audience. So I like that, I like the enthusiasm, I like the fact they give their all, and I like the fact that things change as, as the tour goes on. It's really not a job for them, it's, it's a learning experience, and that's great. It's, keep going, and of course I come in slow when I come yes. in. Yes, okay. So it is and I try to make, make a diminuendo to pianissimo this morning. Ooh, that's exciting. Yes. They're going across the road. <laughs> <laughs> AYO is a very intense six-week period during the summer in which uh, students from all over Asia, from different cultures, get together to make music. five years, I had just done the rehearsal camp, the first three weeks of the rehearsal camp, and then gone home, as most of the other uh, coaches. But this year, I decided to come on the first leg of the tour to Hanoi and Singapore to hear exactly what the concert sounded like after all that preparation. And I was actually quite amazed and thrilled uh, at the performances uh, the, from this ragtag ensemble of, 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 of kids coming from all over Asia comes a really polished 
and, and, and truly professional ensemble that, that really sounds terrific, that could stand really almost with any other um, professional ensemble in the world. People talk about the enthusiasm of youth orchestras all over the world, um, but there is something special. There is something, there's a magic, we used to call it the miracle of AYO. We transform so quickly from the first day, our opening ceremony, when we play the, traditionally play the Nimrod from the Elgar's Enigma Variations, to through to the six weeks later in the last concert when we played that Nimrod again. There's a lot of magic that, that takes place. That, confidence building, friendships built, a relationship with solo artists, with conductors. All of these create a sound for the Asian youth orchestra. I think especially this year, like uh, music is like the main thing in the AYO compared to the past years I've been here. Like in past years, we have a lot of like brass, really heavy like program. But this year, a little bit of classical period for a repertoire, and uh, this is really it's really like he told the orchestra like to the music is the most important things when you play. You don't have to play the right notes to make nice music. That's something I really didn't expect. And when everyone plays together, no matter, it, it might be a bit off if everyone's off tune, but if there's some kind of musicality that the audience can see, or we can feel that musicality, then somehow the, the music just sounds a lot better. <laughs> And you have to play in a different manner. You can play really softly, we can play stronger. Short notes, you have to play short with nice sound left hand, you know? I find that all the uh, stereotypes that people say of Asian children, uh, kids in general, that they work extremely hard, they're focused, they have incredible energy. I mean, it's, it's like that. It, it, you know, elsewhere in the world, but I think that Asian kids particularly have uh, the ability to really, um, uh, the, the whole stereotype of the hardworking Asian is, is really true. Uh, these kids work tirelessly, uh, the hours are grueling, but the results uh, are very gratifying. I think that a lot of the rest of the world could, could uh, look at this model and, and actually learn a little bit from it. It has, uh, it has so much to offer.
last night we, or yesterday afternoon we played in Kamakura, Japan. And uh, of course, many people, I shouldn't say of course, but many people were very generous with their applause and then with their comments afterwards. One man came up and said, that was the greatest experience of my life. I don't know who this man is. I have no idea what experiences he's had in his life. One might say, well, <laughs> you better get a life, mister. Or one might say, well, what a wonderful thing to say. What, what made him feel that way? I don't know. But that's what he said. Well, I think the concept of the Asian Youth Orchestra is something that urges me to go on and that's getting kids from different Asian cities come together, perform, play music and I think that's, that's unique in, a, in one way and I think uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for these kids. I think this getting the kids together and playing music I think is wonderful. And you know, youth today, um, I think if you could get youth to occupy themselves playing an instrument or getting together, it's wonderful. I think this is a first in the history of music. So for rehearsal, I don't move very much. <laughs> Okay, let's get settled so while we can tune, okay guys? Just keep quiet for now if you don't mind. I think it's a fantastic program, not because I created it or not because I'm involved in it. I really just think when I'm not here, I hope it continues long, uh, long after I'm no longer alive. Uh, because I think it's badly needed in Asia. Uh, this bridge between school and professional has to be crossed slowly. 